Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, dear people of God. Welcome to another day of our daily devotional guide, the daily fountain of the Anglican Communion. Today, another special day in the presence of the Lord. And our theme for today is the heart of man. The heart of man. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because when you created man, you gave him heart. And you want us to worship you. You want our hearts to be turned unto you. And so, Lord God, today we are praying that you purify us. Lord, let your word touch us at the point of our knees today. We pray, Lord God, those things that need to be transformed in our heart, in our lives. Today, do your work of perfection and purification and make us who we are supposed to be. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Our test is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, beginning from the first verse through to the tenth verse. And I read, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. With the point of a diamond it is engraved. On the tablet of their heart, and on the horns of your altars, while their children remember their altars and their wooden images by the green trees on the high hills. O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give as plunder your wealth, all your treasures, and your high places of sin within all your borders. And you, even yourself, shall let go of your heritage, which I gave you, and I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know. For you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Thus says the Lord, caused is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes. But his leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful and above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. God described the sin of Judah as being engraved in their hearts with a pen of iron, with a diamond tip. They seemed unrepentant to their sins, which God had been pointing to them. They never cared to repent and seek God's help. Instead, they sought for the help of Egypt against the coming Babylonian captivity. God described their heart and man's heart generally as desperately wicked. God searches the heart and tests the mind as to give every man according to his ways. Our heart is the centerpiece of activity. The word of God enjoins us to guard it with all diligence for out of it comes all the issues of life. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. 
we should be careful of what flows in and out of our hearts. When we trust in the Lord, when we make Him our hope and give our hearts to Him, will be like a tree planted by the riverside that its leaves remain evergreen. On what and on whom do you center your heart? Never give your heart to the devil or to the world. Jeremiah was against the sins of his people. Two, out of their six sins were mentioned in the passage read today. The first one is idolatry. Instead of the children of Israel to give their devotion and obedience to the true and loving God, who had blessed them, the Jews adopted the idols of the nations around them and made these false gods more important than Jehovah. At the high places, in the hills, they built altars to various gods and planted obscene symbols of the goddess Asherah. This defiled the land. Their rich inheritance from God. And because of their idolatry, their inheritance will be plundered. They will lose everything. And it will be their own fault. God told them that their sin had been written with pen of iron in their heart. But it's, the God, it's God's holy law that should have been written on their hearts. Just as we have in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Tie them around your neck. Write them upon the tablet of your heart. But instead of the law of God, Instead of the mind of God being written on their hearts, it was their own sin because they had gone back from following the Lord. People of God, we should know this, that the sin of sinners is never forgotten until it is forgiven. Every sin is ever before God till by repentance it comes to be ever before us. When we repent of our sins, when we confess our sins, then God will accept us and will blot out our transgression. It is graving upon the tablet of their heart. I'm talking about their sins. Their own conscience is witness against them. And this works more than thousand witnesses. And Apostle John, in his final admonition to believers, in his first epistle, said, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. There are many false gods in that day. And also today, we have so many false gods, such as money, possessions, fame, success, pleasure, achievements, and many more. Anything that we love and trust more than the true and living God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is an idol. And this must be torn from our hearts. People of God, idolatry has become a common thing in this country, particularly even in our lives as Christians. We need to repent of this. We have made some little, little gods for ourselves. All in the name of economic hardship. We have turned men. We have turned money, we have turned circumstances into our God. We need to turn back to God. The second sin is unbelief. The leaders of Judah were prone to trust their political allies and lean on the arm of flesh instead of depending on the power of God. To emphasize the difference, Jeremiah contrasted a desert bush with a fruitful tree by the water. Unbelief turns life into a parched wasteland. Faith makes it a fruitful orchard. Soon the Babylonian army will overrun the kingdom of Judah and the land of milk and honey will become a wasteland. The Jewish people have a record of unbelief. 
it was unbelief that kept the people of Israel out of the promised land. It was unbelief that caused them to worship idols and invite the chastening of God during the time of the judges. During the time of the kingdom, it was unbelief that kept the leaders from repenting and turning to God for help. And they became entangled in the costly politics involving Assyria, Egypt, and Babylon. Can we, the children of God today, learn something from this? The sin of unbelief. We need to turn away from it. Unbelief makes us to turn to lesser God and lesser powers for assistance. That is why as a nation we have come to find ourselves in this present predicament. We can no longer depend on God and live for Him. The pursuit of materialism has taken hold of us as a nation. We have turned money and political power to our gods. And we Christians are no exceptions. This takes us to the deplorable condition of the heart of man. The heart of every problem is the problem in the heart. Let me repeat that. The heart of every problem is the problem in the heart. And the Bible says the human heart is deceitful, is incurable. Most of the time we say, well, I know my own heart. But let me tell you, we don't know our heart. Psychology, sociology cannot tell us the state of the heart of man. It's only theology. And God says it, that I, the Lord alone, searches the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways. The heart of man is deceitful. Is desperately wicked. Only God can know it. And that is why in Matthew chapter 13, verse 15, Jesus said, For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Also in Matthew chapter 15, verse 18, it says, These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Jeremiah called the heart desperately wicked. The NIV version of the Bible renders this as beyond kill. And that is the good insight. It will also mean deadly sick. The heart of man is deadly sick. And many times we often try to fool ourselves. And of course we try to fool God into believing that nothing is wrong with us. But then, we are seeing it from the passage of today, that the heart was beyond kill. There is no hope for the heart of sin. We could see this in the life of King David. King David was a man after God's heart. He was anointed, but along the line, he fell into sin. And let me tell you, the sin of adultery and murder that David committed did not start with a day, in a day. It has started over time. It grew. The moment he believes that, yes, he's the king, he could no longer depend on God, you know, for what to do and what not to do, is that the liberty to determine what happens? That sin started creeping into his life. And gradually, it blossomed until he fell into the sin of adultery with Bathsheba. It started with something smaller, something less conspicuous, less noticeable, something that he can laugh off. But whatever started it, it took hold and it grew until it possessed his whole heart and make his work with God to no longer be straight and pure. People of God, little things will start with, in our hearts. Little things will start and then we allow it to grow because that is heart. That is our heart. David eventually had to go back to God. 
and in Psalm 51, he said, create in me a new heart. Create in me. That is, God, look at me. Touch everything with, within me and recreate me. That is what he was saying, that God should recreate him. And that tells us that it is only God who can do that surgical operation in our life. It is not the book that we read. It is not the knowledge or the experience we gain. It is God alone. And that is why we need to yield our heart unto him so that God can have his way. God can make our heart to be poor, pure. No matter what is therein, God is ready. God is available to touch us and to make us better. We need to come back to him. Yield our heart unto him. Surrender our heart unto him. Let him purify us. Let him make us new. And it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you once again for what you have taught us today. Touch our hearts and make our hearts pure. So that at the end of the day, the issues of life, things that will glorify you, will emanate from our hearts and make us better Christians. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.